about this morning. Let's grab your redback hymnal and let's stand for our call to worship. Turn to page 183 in your redback hymnal. 183. Yeah, let's do uh, verses 1, 2, and 6. Verses 1, 2, and 6. It's a short song, but there's a lot of verses in it, so we're just going to abbreviate it a little bit. Verses 1, 2, and 6. Jesus Christ is made. to see you today. We've got a lot of folks traveling uh, out of uh, uh, the area today, so we need to be much in prayer for them as they're traveling back and forth. Also, uh, uh, we just got a lot of uh, prayer requests and needs. Uh, like I said, since we uh, put this out on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, not real comfortable sharing a lot about a lot of those different things, but... Uh, uh, one in particular, just be much in prayer about for uh, Brother Stan, Sister Donetta Pierce. Uh, just pray that God uh, would just touch and, and meet the needs that are there. Uh, but it's awfully good uh, to see you today. Thank you for being with us. As far as uh, first off, do we have any first-time visitors? I don't think I saw anybody, but I just want to make sure. Any first-time visitors? All right. Uh, then everybody's home, folks. Good to see you. In regards to that, the new church directory is out there in the vestibule, a, a copy of it. Go If you don't care, if you haven't done that yet, uh, take a look at your family's name. Make sure all the information is correct. If it is, just put a red check mark by it uh, so that we know that you've actually looked at it. Uh, if there's something wrong, take that same red pen, write through whatever the changes need to be. Uh, we're trying to get the updated directory together, so if you'll do that, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, like I said, put a check mark so we know you've looked at it. And if there's any changes, just make those changes, all right? Senior adults, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, over in the banquet hall. The menu's pizza, salad, uh, base, and the drinks are furnished. Please bring your favorite salad toppings and desserts. Widow support group on Tuesday, April 18th. Perkins Restaurant, please feel free to bring a widowed friend. Next Monday, the 24th, will be our uh, Fellowship of Deacons meeting. Uh, the mother-daughter banquet, Saturday, May 13th, 5 o'clock, over in the banquet hall. The tickets will be $14 for ages 12 and older, 7 for ages 6 to 11, and children under 5 are free. The meal is going to be catered by Olive Garden. Uh, tickets will be on sale after the service today in the foyer. Uh, who's going who's to have the tickets? Okay. All the officers have got the tickets, so you can see them after the service today. Uh, deadline to purchase the tickets is Sunday, May the 7th. 
the homeless mission, currently accepting donations of uh, wrapped snack foods, bottled waters, blankets, gently used t-shirts, socks, and backpacks. Again, there's a box in the foyer for that. Then Operation Christmas Child, small cups, bowls, plates, spoons, and forks. <clears throat> also, uh, for everyone that is a part of Soldiers of Grace, if you don't care, I uh, need to meet with you right after the service today. Just uh, come up here to the front pew. Uh, uh, front pew's here, and uh, just got some stuff I need to share with you real quick. It won't take me just a few minutes, uh, but just want to kind of update you on some stuff uh, that we've been dealing with the last week or so. Uh, but want to uh, kind of give you an update about that and what kind of path forward on that. All right? Any other announcements that I forgot? Any announcements that I forgot? The new prayers we sing, all right? Let's all stand and grab your blue book this time. Let's turn to page 392. 392. More about Jesus I be seated.
Let's all stand one more time. Grab your blue book and turn to page 572. We'll just sing the first verse here and fellowship with one another, all right? 572. Once again, it's a joy and a privilege to see you today. Those that are joining via the live stream or maybe watching a little bit later on YouTube, we just appreciate you uh, joining us today for our services, regardless of the time of day that it is. It's just a privilege to have you. Pray that uh, something will be said and done to bring honor and glory to Christ and encourage your heart uh, today. I uh, meant to do this a moment ago. Uh, and uh, like I said, sometimes it gets so many things on my mind. It's been kind of an interesting morning. Uh, that I forget to do something that I intend to. So what I want to do before we turn things over here to the trio real quick uh, is we want to open up with a word of prayer. We didn't do that a moment ago. Like I said, I, I had a lot of other things on my mind trying to figure out what to do there. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. All right, Father, we come to you, and we do thank you so much for the privilege of prayer. And, Father, on this day, there are a lot of people specifically that just need a special touch from heaven. Father, for some, it's comfort. For some, it's direction. For some, Father, it's a touch or uh, at least the peace that passes all understanding. And Father, I pray that you would just have your way in each and every situation here today. Father, we shared a bunch of prayer requests during our Sunday school hour. and Father, I know that every person here has got a particular need, something that they're uh, praying about, something that they're looking for help and guidance. 
Father, I pray that you would just be that that each and every person needs here today. Father, most of all, we pray if there's one here that's lost, that before they'd leave this service today, they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Christ is their Savior. And we'll give you the praise for all that you do with each of the classes that are meeting around the campus and, and Father, for the sanctuary service here today. I just praise you for what you're going to do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you pray. It's, it, they've sung for us before, uh, but they came, I guess, I don't know if it was this past week or the week before, uh, and uh, the, the last time I think they were in there just, just kind of the, uh, the Kidwell trio or something like that, and they said they didn't like it because Sabrina was singing with them, so they just decided to adopt the name of the church, uh, the Holy Mountain Trio. So you pray for them, all right? Thank you, Pastor. You know, there's a song that I can't get off my heart. I wish I could tell the whole story as how we got to get this old hymn of the faith, but uh, I don't want to take preacher's time. So I'll be as brief as I can be, but uh, some years ago, a man named Joseph Scriven, his background's interesting. If you looked it up on online or something, you did a lot of wonderful things. He's a man who came to love the Lord dearly and spent his life trying to get the gospel to folks. But on one occasion, he was uh, gotten a letter from his mother, and she was despondent, discouraged. Her best friend had forsaken her, and she was distraught. She just didn't know what to do. So he wrote her a letter back. She was in Ireland. He was in Canada. He wrote her a letter back trying to encourage her to keep her eyes on Jesus. Because sometimes friends, the very best of friends, will fail you. Not always deliberately, but just because we have limitations. But remember, Jesus never fails. Keep your trust in him. Always look to him. And uh, so he was writing the letter to his mother to this effect, and it come, came out poetically. And, and he wrote it and made it a poem and had sent it to her. He made a copy of it. He was very ill, and a friend had visited him, a man named Charles Craven. And uh, Joseph Scriven kind of dozed off, slept a little while, and while he was sleeping, Charles Craven saw a piece of paper folded and laying on a little table beside Joseph Scriven's bed. He took it and he looked at it. It was this beautiful poem. And he was quite impressed and blessed by it. So in the course of time, Joseph Scriven awakened, and, and Charles Craven asked him, said, where did you get that poem? Did you write that poem, Joe? He said, well, the Lord and I wrote it. And that's the words to that song. It later became, was put to music. Uh, Joe Scriven never saw it come to be a popular hymn, but he had written the words, and Charles Craven had put, had put music to it. You'll be familiar with the hymn. I'm just going to recite the first verse, and then we're going to sing a song. The song goes like this. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Now listen to this part. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your care on him, for he careth for you. The song we want to sing is titled, There's No Need to Doubt Him Now. You've trusted him before. You've trusted him for your salvation. There have been other needs. Don't give up on the Lord now. It might be your darkest hour, but there's no need to doubt him. I'll pray for Miss Diane. She gets a little nervous. She got a wrong foot on the wrong pedal. I've heard people doing that with their cars. <laughs> but it ain't a car, honey. You can play it any time. <laughs>
there's no need to doubt him now. He'll make a way somehow safely this far. Jesus has brought me there's no need to doubt him now child of God have no fear though your past seems unclear someday God's plan will unfold. He has never, never failed. He will always prevail. See the Lord, He's still in control. And there's no doubt him now. He'll make a way somehow safely this far. Jesus has brought me. There's no He'll make a way somehow safely this far. Jesus has brought me. There's no need to doubt him now. Safely. Far, Jesus has brought me. There's no need to doubt him Thank you all. God bless your heart. Aren't you glad that he's ever faithful? Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter number 4. Or excuse me, Philippians chapter number 4. And then 1 Peter chapter number 5 and verse number 7. I've been struggling since this morning before we got to the church about the message for today. And I'm not really going to say that in some respects that this is so much a message as just a call. Like I said, if you look in your bulletin, you'll see that there's an outline there for a sermon on life after Easter. But this morning... 
about 9.15, I received a text that a dear family in our church had lost their son. And I guess that was the culmination of just kind of a burden that had been on my heart for the last several days. Earlier this week, we learned that a young middle-aged student who's actually attended here at this church, as a matter of fact, his family attended here at this church back before COVID for several weeks. And they were trying to decide God's will between here and another location, and God led them to that other location. But when I first got news of the suicide of this young 12-year-old boy, I didn't connect the dots. It wasn't until later when I saw the obituary that I understood what was going on or what had happened and the connection that we as a church had to them. That, and, and like I said, he had been here just a couple of weeks ago. Another part of our late dear lady here in our church lost her aunt this week. Another dear lady in our church just a few weeks ago, as you well know, lost her husband unexpectedly at home. Although he was sick and they knew sometime it was going to happen, the way the events transpired and that didn't, uh, that wasn't how they thought things would go. Since then, other things have rocked this dear lady's world. Some of the things that have happened since. And I was sitting there just trying to determine, God, do you want me to put, go forward with after, life after Easter? Because I'm going to be honest with you. When, it looks, when you look at all the things that are going on in the world today, if we didn't have life after Easter, we wouldn't know what to do or how to handle them. Aren't you glad that we've got new life in Christ because he rose from the grave? But I was praying all the way to church, trying to pray while I was teaching Sunday school, which is dangerous because you never know what you're going to say when you're trying to do two things at the same time. And sat back there before the choir gathered and was praying again and just trying, you know, God, what do you want? Sister Diana, she showed me the outline. She said, hey. She said, you couldn't possibly have known what song we were going to sing, and this outline fits perfectly with what we're going to sing. And I told her, well, I said, <laughs> I said you just pray, because I ain't real sure right now whether we're going to preach that out loud or not. But I said, either way, with what God's burden may be burning my heart with, it fits anyway. It doesn't matter. There's no reason to doubt him now. Then Brother Joe quotes the first line of that song. What a friend we have in Jesus. And what went through my mind was I'm so glad that the people that I just mentioned Another dear friend, somebody I've known for many, many years, been friends with the family, known them, and, but he's getting ready to slip out into eternity, probably in the next two or three days. <laughs> and what went through my mind was when Brother Joe said that, was I'm glad 
that each of those people that I mentioned have a friend named Jesus. I know sometimes, and you're just going to have to pray for me. I'm just trying to follow the Lord. I know sometimes that those who are lost will say things that, well, Christianity or believing in Jesus or whatever like that is just a crutch. It's something to lean on because you're not strong enough to bear it yourself. And I'll be honest with you, for a long time, I kind of struggled with that answer. Lost people lose loved ones. Lost people have terrible things happen in their life and happen in their world. And yet, they get up tomorrow too. They get up and still function. And you say, well, but the Christian functions better than the lost person. Sometimes it seems that way. But here's the answer. When something happens in the life of a Christian, we don't have to bear that burden alone. Lost people say, well, I've got my friends, I've got my family. True. We've got our friends. We've got our family. But can I tell you the difference? We've got someone who can do what our family and friends cannot. That's the difference. I'm glad when I go through a hard time that I've got people that I can talk to, Sabrina, Aaron sometimes. <laughs> about various and plenty things that I'm struggling with, just trying to figure out how to put things together or whatever else. Brother Jim has been my deacon since I've been here, and I think I've wore him out sometimes. So I'm very thankful that I have family and friends that I can go to. But what I'm the most thankful for is that even though Sabrina and Aaron and Jim and any number of people I can mention in this church and whatever, they can go so far. But Jesus goes farther. You bury a loved one and you can only go to the grave. But Jesus goes farther. You deal with a heartbreaking situation and you can have a friend that you can talk to and they can give you advice and they can encourage your heart and they can lift you up. But Jesus goes farther. Because he's the one. When you're laying in the bed at night. Nobody else around. Nobody else to talk to. And all you've got what is what's echoing around in your mind. And Jesus is right there. You can be facing a situation and 
Your family and friends can give you the most solid, best advice for how to deal with that situation than you can, that you could ever imagine. But Jesus goes farther. Because when we trust Him, He does one of two things. He either intervenes in that situation or he gives you the strength to bear that situation that the closest friend could never give you. Jesus goes farther. I was thinking about the family this morning and like I said, just for sake of the fact that we broadcast this on YouTube. I'm not mentioning any names tonight in the prayer time. We'll give you as much specifics as we can. But as I was praying about that situation when I was told what happened, and I was just so thankful that Jesus was there. And he was going to go farther. First Peter chapter number 5, verse number 7. You, you can turn there, but it's a very familiar verse. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Thank you for your testimony, brother, because you were kind of the one that pushed me over the edge on which way God wanted me to go, by the way. 341. Just listen. You already heard the first part. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege. To carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Now, let me explain something about that word discouraged. It doesn't mean that you're never heartbroken. To be discouraged means to be without courage. Our hearts still break. We still struggle. But we should never be without courage. Why? Because Jesus goes farther. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Casting all your care Upon him, for he careth for you. Why? Because Jesus goes farther. The other verse that God put on my heart, and I guess this gets to the second part of what I was going to say when I said it's not so much a message as it is a call. 
It's Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 6. Be careful for nothing. And again, that the idea of that word is be anxious. The word careful just means be full of care, to be anxious for nothing. But in everything. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. As I said earlier, the lost person has friends. They have family. They can help them through a trial. But for us as believers, we have one another. And we too can go further. Not because we can give better advice. Sometimes I worry when people come to me for advice because I don't, you know, <laughs> you, know you hope you're, <laughs> you're hope you're on track. But here's the difference that we as believers make to one another that the lost just do not have. We can go further because we can take it to the one who goes further. Did you hear that? We can go further because we can take it to the one who does go further. And I know tonight, somewhere around 7 o'clock, we usually have our church prayer time. And we'll do that tonight. Because like I said, I've been very vague about some things just because of the live stream. But I truly feel the need. And like I said, this is where I've been struggling since the phone, the text this morning. I truly feel the need for us as a body of believers to go further this morning and take one another to the one who goes further. How many of you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have benefited because somebody lifted you up to the throne? Yeah. And while I can't share all the, all the needs that I know about, the things that are going on in people's hearts and in people's lives. And there are things going on in your all's hearts and in your lives that I don't even know about. We can go further by taking, them to, taking those, each other to the one who can go further. So what I want us to do this morning is I want us to just gather around the altar as many as can I know some can't that's fine but if you can gather around the altar the first few pews here and let's just go to the Lord in prayer on behalf of each other all right let's come
my Heavenly Father. How I thank you that with even even with a heavy heart, the Father, we can come to you in our time of need. Father, I. I, I don't know. I, I, I've, all I've done is try to be obedient to you this morning. I don't know why that you have led us to this today. But Father, you tell us in your word that we're to lift one another up in supplication. That's simply prayer on behalf of others. And Father, I... I know the list that I have. The situations, the heartbreak. And I know that each and every person that's bowing their head here today that knows you as Savior. They've got their own list of requests for others. But Father, you burdened my heart this morning for us just to take the time to do that. Father, I pray for those who have lost loved ones just in the last few days. I pray for those who are dealing with the aftermath and all the situations that accompany the death of a loved one. Father, I pray for those who are facing surgeries, recovering from surgeries, Father, trying to heal from injuries. Father, I pray for those who are hurting. Maybe not physically, but emotionally or spiritually. Father, we can only go so far. And even though we can go farther than those who are lost, we're coming to the one who can go much farther. That knows every need. Knows every heartache. Knows every illness. Father, I ask. Not because of arrogance. But because First Peter five says seven says to cast all our care upon you, for you care for us. So in obedience, in bringing these supplications to you, we humbly seek that your will be done. Touch. Encourage challenge Father if there's one person here even today that doesn't know you as Savior we know it's your will that not any should perish but that all should come to repentance and Father I pray that today would be the day if they're lost or they're not sure that they're saved that today would be the day that they would do so and make sure We ask that you would hover in around our church. Father, the lost world may see what we're doing right now as a crutch. But they just don't understand how much further you go than the best plans and comfort that we as people can provide on our own. We love you. 
And we truly give you the praise and thank you for how you're going to move. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. All hearts and minds clear. All hearts and minds clear. Yeah. Amen. 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 He is faithful. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You said it's your night shift manager's husband. Remember that. Somebody else. You want to thank Jesus for being there? Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 Sorry, what? Yeah. Amen. Somebody is? Somebody is? <laughs> no. That's right. That's it. That's it. Amen. Amen. No room to doubt him now. 
Somebody else? Amen. 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 Somebody else? Amen. 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 Aries. Okay. I know. Many of you all couldn't hear that, but what she was asking is that we uh, pray for this little girl, okay? So due to the situation, I'm not going to say anything else for the YouTube live stream, but we'll talk more about it tonight. Brother, did I see you stand up? Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come 
Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. 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 Somebody is? Mm hmm. That's right. Amen. 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 Mm hmm. Amen. Amen. Somebody is. You know. Amen. 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 Somebody is? Somebody is? Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Somebody is? Somebody is? Have you done what God wants you to do this morning? Have you been a beat? Hearts and minds clear. Sprint, come, if you would, come to the piano. We're going to sing just the first verse. 341 in the Red Book. And we're just going to sing the first verse. And after we finish that first verse, Brother Barney, if you would, you dismiss us in a word of prayer.
What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. The stand will be dismissed in order of prayer. Brother Barney.